Last night you walked out of the room while I was still talking to you. I think we need to discuss this calmly. Repeat what you said to me last night. I don't think I heard you properly. Dad, there's something I need to talk to you about. I'm pregnant. Pregnant? You're kidding, right? How could you let this happen? Well, Dad, it's Clanzo's baby. Yonzo, that good-for-nothing guy. I encouraged you to bring your boyfriends home, not to end up like this. Dad, he denied the pregnancy and said awful things about me. You're just like your mother, irresponsible and careless. I regret having you as my daughter. Dad, I thought you'd understand. I need your support. Support? I regret wasting my money on you. You're nothing but trouble. I can't believe I raised a daughter like you. You have ruined my image. I am ashamed of you. Dad, please. No, Jerissa. You're just like those loose women out there. I regret everything. You've brought shame to this family. The next day. Clanzo, we need to talk about my pregnancy. This child is as much your responsibility as it is mine. Pregnant? You've got to be kidding me. You're just like those loose women, aren't you? What? Clanzo, this is our baby. I thought you would take responsibility. Responsibility? I would never marry someone like you. This is your problem, not mine. Besides, I am too young to be a father. You should have prevented the pregnancy. Clanzo, please, we can figure this out together. I thought you loved me. Love, I was just having fun with you. Go find the real father of the child. I want nothing to do with it. But we planned a future together. How can you deny everything now? Plans change. Jarissa, I never loved you. I won't let this ruin my life. The conversation escalates into a heated argument as Lanzo denies any responsibility and rejects Jerissa, leaving her hurt and devastated. You've brought shame to this family. Pack your things and leave. Go and live with your boyfriends. Dad, please, I need your support. Support? You're just like your mother. I won't have a daughter like you ruining my reputation. Jerissa, pregnant and desperate, is forced to leave her home. The irony is stark. Barkley, who displayed a loose lifestyle himself, now casts Jerissa out for following in his footsteps. I thought he understood. I thought he cared. This serves as a cautionary tale, reminding parents to be mindful of the examples they set. Children often mirror the behavior they observe in their homes, and condemning them without reflection may lead to painful consequences. Aunt Innie, I'm in a tough spot. Can I stay with you for a while? I have nowhere else to go. Jerissa, you know we're not on good terms with Barkley after what he did to our dad. We can't get involved in your mess. Please, Aunt Innie, I have nowhere else to turn. I'm pregnant. I'm sorry, Jerissa. Sort out your own problems. Jerissa, feeling defeated, tries another relative. Let me try someone else. Uncle, it's Jarissa. Can I stay with you and Grandma for a bit? I'm in trouble. Jarissa, you know how it is. We can't risk being on Barclay's bad side. It's not our mess to clean up. Why don't you call your mother? Mom, I have nowhere to go. And I'm pregnant. Can you help me? Jarissa, I can't believe you're calling me after a year. What do you want? Mom, please, I have nowhere else to turn. I'm alone, pregnant, and desperate. Pregnant, we'll talk about it when you get here. Fine, I'll send you some money. But don't expect me to solve all your problems. Thank you, Mom. Use the money to board the next luxury coach to my country. We'll talk when you get here. A 
Are you also traveling to the great and successful country of Guillermo, or are you going to travel further to the powerful nation of Mesa Marrakesh? I am sorry madam, but I feel uncomfortable giving details of my trip to complete strangers. What's the big deal? I just wanted to give you a small parcel to drop off in either one of those countries. No madam, I will not be able to help you. I have heard of how some people got on the wrong side of the law after agreeing to carry parcels for strangers. I will not fall prey to such. I just want you to give my daughter a small parcel, she's starving at boarding school. I am sorry ma'am, it's too risky. You're already traveling with us, why don't you drop the parcels yourself? I will not be traveling beyond the border. Just do this one favor for me. I said, no, if you try to force me, I'll scream. What? There's no need for that, I better find someone else who can help me with the parcels. Be careful of strangers. Come in. Mom Carolana, Jerissa, my data, Mom, you've moved. This place is incredible. We've come a long way, Jarissa. Ziggy and I decided it was time for a change. We give God all the glory. Jarissa. Ziggy. Jarissa, long time no see. Welcome to our new home. I can't believe this. It's so different from the old place. We give God all the glory. We've worked hard for this. It's time for a fresh start. Jerissa, realizing that things might be different now, feels a mixture of surprise and hope. Mom, I'm so sorry for everything, for how I treated you. I was blind and let Dad's words poison my mind. Jerissa, it's okay. I forgave you a long time ago. I've been praying for you, hoping you'd find your way. I can't believe I let him come between us. You deserved better. We all make mistakes, Jarissa. What matters is that you're here now. I thank God for you, Mother. I was lost and now, I am found. Mom, I don't know what to do about the baby. I'm so ashamed of the circumstances. Jarissa, a child is a gift from God, no matter the circumstances they are born under. But Mom, what if I can't provide for the baby? What if I mess up its life? God has a plan for every life, Jarissa. We may not understand it now, but trust that this child is meant to be a part of our lives. Jarissa, comforted by her mother's words, starts to reflect on the deeper meaning of the situation. Lord, I come before you with a humble heart. Please forgive me for the mistakes I've made. Guide my footsteps and help me bring up this baby in your ways. We, as a family, surrender to your will, Lord. With your help and Ziggy's support, we'll raise this child in the ways of the Lord. Lord, I ask for deliverance for me and this unborn child from any generational curses or evil influences tied to my past. Thank you for rescuing me from the streets and bringing me to this place. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Sisters, I've found love again, and I believe that Pastor Roberts is the love of my life. Carolana, you can't be our pastor's wife. You've been married before, but the pastor himself has been married before. His ex-wife worshipped other gods and committed infidelity. Carolana faces rejection from the church ladies as they disapprove of her becoming the pastor's wife due to her past marriage. She counters by pointing out that the pastor himself has a history of marriage and divorce citing infidelity and worship of other gods by his former wife. Despite attempts to belittle and depress her, Carolana remains resilient, grounded in her newfound relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Rather than succumbing to manipulation, she chooses to combat negativity through fervent prayers, seeking God's will in her life. We can't have a woman with a past like yours representing our church. My past is redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I won't be belittled for the mistakes I made. We can't allow someone like her to become our pastor's wife, never. 
No one will respect the pastor or our church once they find out that she's a divorcee with two kids. I will leave this church if she marries our pastor. There are many beautiful young women in our church that Pastor Roberts can choose from. The women try to manipulate and belittle Carolina, but she remains strong in her faith seeking godly counsel. In the past, Carolina would have succumbed to all the negativity however, this time around she chose to pray instead of spiraling down into depression. I pray for God's will to be done. My joy is in the Lord, not in the opinions of others. Help me Lord Jesus. Carolina left the church and opened her own ministry. Lead Pastor Garvey, thank you for supporting me in my ministry. Our joy is in the Lord, and by God's grace, we'll build a church that glorifies Him. Amen. As the years pass, Carolina's ministry grows rapidly, and she becomes a formidable force in preaching globally. She works tirelessly to preach the gospel. A few years later, Carolina, I realized the mistakes I made. Our country is in shambles, and I want to move to your country. I miss you, especially now that Ziggy is doing well. I know that our son, Ziggy, could support me now that I am unemployed. Barkley, I appreciate your apology, but we've moved on. I can't go back to the way things were. I've heard Jerissa is successful now, and Erie said she never used the degree that she encouraged her to pursue. Jarissa found her way, and she holds a senior position in our ministry. We're a family, Barclay, without you. I'm struggling here. Can't you help me, Carolina? The kids. We forgave you, Barclay, but we've moved on. You need to find your own way. Devastated, Barclay realizes the consequences of his actions, left to face the hardships alone. In the intricate tapestry of life, the story of Carolina, Jerissa, and Barclay unfolds with lessons that resonate. Carolina's resilience and unwavering faith teach us that redemption is possible, and the past doesn't define the future. Forgiveness, offered by Carolina and her children, showcases the transformative power of grace. Jerissa's journey reminds us that the choices we make can lead to unexpected paths. Her decision to break away from destructive patterns, guided by faith, illuminates the strength found in rebuilding one's life. Barclay's tale serves as a cautionary note. His actions, rooted in selfishness and disregard, result in isolation and regret. The story echoes the importance of accountability and the far-reaching consequences of our decisions. Ultimately, this narrative underscores the significance of family, faith, and forgiveness. It underscores the potential for healing, growth, and the possibility of brighter days ahead, even after the darkest nights. Life's journey may be challenging, but with faith, love, and perseverance, redemption and transformation are always within reach. After Kenan's passing, the dispute over the estate intensified among the sisters when the will disclosed that Keenan had bequeathed his entire estate to Ari and her children. How could he do this to us? To me, after all we've been through. Amy, it's not about us. Dad made his choice. Choice, it's manipulation. You poisoned his mind against us. I would never do that. Dad saw how my children and I genuinely cared for him. You've always been the favorite. Now, you get everything. Amy, this isn't about favorites. It's about family. Family. Eerie, you think taking everything is about family. We should have been there for him more, not fighting over his fixed assets. It's not just about the money. We missed out on being a real family. I tried to build that with him. It wasn't about wealth. Aunt Irie, you just want to play the victim. We see through your act. Dad's gone, and you get to play the grieving damsel while living in luxury. I loved him. This was never about money for me. I am not afraid of you, Innie. Do your worst.
convenient, isn't it? You get it all without lifting a finger. Maybe we should have focused on being a family instead of fighting over scraps. It's never too late to rebuild, Innie. The estate is just a part of his legacy. We can't let Erie get away with this. She manipulated Dad into cutting us out. This isn't right. We deserve our share. Erie played him, and now she gets everything. We need to cut ties. Are you sure about that? The two of you destroyed my marriage and had me banished and today you are fighting against each other. Your venom knows no limits. Even though Dad cut off ties with me, I was still hoping to inherit a piece of farmland from him. After what you did, you don't deserve anything however, on the other hand, Erie and her kids can't inherit everything. Dad would have never done this if he weren't manipulated. We have to protect what's rightfully ours. What do we do? We cut them off. No contact, no help. Let them see how they fare without us. This feels extreme. Extreme times call for extreme measures. We can't let her enjoy the spoils of her manipulation. Fine, I'll do it. But what about the kids? They're part of the package. No exceptions. Meanwhile, Innie starts plotting Irie's downfall. Soon after assuming control of Kinnon's estate, Irie fell seriously ill, and the doctors were unable to identify the cause of her illness. Mom, I rushed back home from overseas as soon as I heard that you had been admitted at this hospital. Children, gather around. There's something I need to tell you. Mom, you need to rest. No, listen carefully. Innie and the others, they're not to be trusted. What do you mean? I've been poisoned. Someone is after us. You must be careful. Poisoned. But why? They want what we have. Your granddad Kennan's estate, it's not safe. Mom, we can't lose you. All of you, promise me that you won't trust anyone in the family. Stay away until the storm passes. We can't leave you alone. You have each other. Be strong. Live your lives in the foreign lands. Don't come back until all this settles. We promise, Mum. That's my boy. The room is heavy with the weight of Irie's warning as she imparts her final advice to her children. Days later, Irie passes away mysteriously. The children, now left to navigate the world of uncertainty, grapple with the aftermath of their mother's passing and the ominous warning she left them. May Irie find eternal peace. She was a woman of great strength. It's a shame her siblings didn't attend the funeral. The somber atmosphere of Irie's funeral, attended only by church elders, her children, and close friends. My mother's siblings were never really there for her. They are jealous maybe. They're the ones behind your mother's demise. After the funeral, Irie's eldest daughter takes charge. Barrister, change all the locks. Put tenants in the estate. Are you sure about this, Alicia? Mom warned us. We can't let any and the others near it. You're putting the assets in your name in your siblings' names. Yes, we will divide the farmland equally and share the monthly rentals. We can't risk any and them trying to take the estate away from us. Mom left it for us. Consider it done. Thank you, Barrister. Meanwhile, Innie learns of the decisions made by Iris's daughter. How did Alicia get away with this? I can't believe they shut us out completely. <laughs> Irie's daughter, now in control, makes a final move. Innie, left devastated, realizes her manipulation has no hold anymore. With Irie's children living abroad and the estate secured, Innie faces the consequences of her actions, left with no way to manipulate or control the situation. Banned. None of them are ever setting foot on our estate. Yes. Thankfully, we will be leaving this country within an hour. Yes, the estate agents will monitor the estate and find us tenants for a small monthly fee. Great. I wonder what will become of Aunt Innie since she spent her whole life plotting and planning to inherit all of Grandpa's assets. 
Only time will tell. As for us, we need to focus on building our own wealth with God's help. Amen, sis. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart overflowing with gratitude and praise. Your word says in Psalm 100, 4, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Lord, I thank you for guiding me away from the paths of negativity and leading me to the company of positive, God-fearing friends. Proverbs 13.20 reminds us, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Father, I am grateful for the strength you've given me to separate myself from negative and envious influences. Your word in 1 Corinthians 15.33 warns us, Do not be misled, bad company corrupts good character. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've showered upon me and my children. Psalm 103, 2-5 declares, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I praise you for the new lease of life you've granted me, for my positive mindset anchored in your word. Romans 12, 2 encourages us, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Lord, I am thankful for my deliverance, for the deliverance of my family. Psalm 34, 17 assures us, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, he delivers them from all their troubles. Lord, I thank you for the thriving ministry that I run. I know that it is only by God's grace that I have come this far. Proverbs 16, 3 reminds us, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Any facing the consequences of her actions, as her world crumbles. Why is everything falling apart? My business, my relationships. Any, maybe it's time to reconsider your choices. I don't need advice. I'm in control. Any, the deals are falling through. It's like there's a curse. Curses are just superstitions. Any, your health issues might be stress-related. I can handle stress. I don't need your theories. Any reflects on her disobedience to the Lord and the consequences unfolding. My business has been shut down. My health is deteriorating. My children have severed all ties with me. I am drowning in debt and I have a series of mental health issues. Is this because I turned away from God? Sometimes, we reap what we sow. Repentance and seeking God's grace might be your way out. It's never too late to turn back to Him. And he grapples with the reality that her disobedience has led to a series of repercussions, and she begins to contemplate a spiritual transformation. Tashel, may I please move in with you and the kids? I need help. My business closed and the bank repossessed my townhouse. What? After everything you did to me and my family, I have nowhere else to go. I'm sick, broke, and alone. You destroyed my marriage, and now you expect help. Look who's come crawling back. I just need a place to stay temporarily. I have nowhere else to go. Please leave this place now, I won't take you in, you're a snake innie. Who knows what you're scheming. Get out of here now. Even my twin daughters abandoned me when they left the country. I am in desperate need of help, I am not scheming anything. I promise. Leave this place now and don't ever come back. Close the door behind you. As Innie's desperation grows, she turns to an ex-boyfriend for refuge. However, a few months later... I can't keep taking care of you. It's over, Innie. Please, I have nothing left. I just need some time. Find somewhere else to go. I can't carry your burden anymore. You don't have any money hence, you're of no use to me. Get out. Shameless woman. Living with a man without marriage. You claim to be a Christian. Leave my son alone. Go find someone else to leech off. We don't want you here. I am now being treated in the same way that I treated Carolina, Femi, Brianna, Tashel and others. Surely, we reap what we sow. What have I become? Where do I go from here? 
any now homeless and hungry seeks solace at Barclays Gate. Facing rejection and humiliation, Annie finds the courage to ask Barclay for help. Barclay, I have nowhere to go. Can't you find it in your heart to help? After all that you've done to me, Annie. Additionally, you're aware that I've been unemployed for the past few years. How can I provide for you when I'm struggling to feed myself? Currently, I depend on temporary jobs and the occasional financial support from Carolina and the kids. If you move in, you'll be residing in a house partially owned by Carolina, and all the food you consume will be purchased with her money and her children's contributions. Keep in mind that this is the same Carolina you kicked out of our family. I regret everything Barkley. I made a mistake. I have realized my mistakes. I am working on becoming a better person by God's grace. You can move in, you're my sister after all. You can stay for a while, but don't think I've forgotten what you did. Barkley, I... Save it. Do you remember how you spent your life plotting and scheming to take over Dad's estate? You convinced Dad to disown Tashel and me, but all your schemes were in vain. You were still excluded from his will. I had my reasons. Reasons. Look where it got you. Dad saw through your manipulation. Everything you did, all those devious plans, and for what? You're left with nothing. I thought I could control everything. We shall live to see the reward of the wicked, any. Dad's words. I think it's a verse in Psalm 91 but you wouldn't know, would you? If only you had used that energy to build a successful business empire, pay off your mortgage like some of us, buy assets, create something for yourself. I didn't see it then. It's too late now. You can't change the hands of time. What have I done? You reap what you sow, Innie. Maybe now you'll understand the true cost of your choices. In this moment, Innie faces the weight of her past decisions and the reality that she can't undo the damage she has caused. A few weeks later, Innie faces the consequences of her manipulative actions as Barkley turns violent, and she seeks a way to undo the damage. Innie, what I do in my house is none of your business. Ever since Carolina and that fake Evita left me, I have lost all respect for women hence, I bring many women home. Don't try to teach me right from wrong. If you don't like my lifestyle then leave, the door is open. Barkley, you need to go for therapy. You need to speak to someone about this. Why don't you get married again? I won't remarry because I don't want the woman to leave me the way Carolina and the kids did. In fact, you're the one who destroyed my marriage to Carolina. You ruined my life by introducing me to Evita, and by complaining day and night about Carolina. You made me kick her out of the house, you made me believe that Evita was in love with me yet she was only an actress. I hate you Innie, you ruined my life. If I don't commit to any of these women then I will never be heard when they leave. My heart broke to pieces when Evita disappeared and when Carolina ended things with me. Barkley, I think you have serious mental health issues. I can recommend a psychiatrist or counselor. Leave me alone Innie. Go to your room before I pounce on you. Who are you to tell me to see a psychiatrist? Fine, fine, I'll leave you alone. Please don't hurt me. You thought you could control me, Innie. Now look at what you've done. Ha, ha, ha. What have I unleashed? Barkley has become a monster, and I'm the one who created him. There must be an antidote, a way to undo what I did to Barkley. I am now facing the harsh reality of living with the monster I helped create. I never thought they'd come a day when I would be living with Barkley. I manipulated him and gave him all sorts of medication so that Carolina leaves him but it seems the medication, which was supposed to have a temporary effect on him, permanently damaged him. And this is worsened by how Evita left him, that is, after I paid her for pretending to be in love with Barkley. I regret playing with people's lives and emotions. I never meant for it to come to this. I did all of this to force Barkley to divorce Carolina and bow down to me. But it's become a nightmare. As Annie seeks a way to stand on her own feet again, she acknowledges the need for genuine repentance and deliverance. Lord, deliver us from these malevolent spirits that have kept us in darkness. Amen.
Until I repent and seek the Lord with all my heart, I'll remain at the mercy of Barclay and his demons. In their quest for freedom, Innie and Barclay remain unaware of the deeper spiritual battles that need to be fought for true deliverance. The path to light and redemption requires repentance and a sincere turning to the Lord for help. A few days later. What is that Carolina? Carolina is being interviewed on TV. Innie, broken and in tears, witnesses Carolina's success and blessings on television. The TV displays Carolina being interviewed about her global ministry and her testimony. How did I end up like this? Surely, the Lord has prepared a table for Carolina in front of all of her enemies. Carolina is now a God-fearing, successful, and wealthy business mogul who runs various successful businesses and a ministry. She's also a well-known preacher yet I have nothing to show for all the harm I've done. We are blessed beyond measure. By God's grace, our ministry now reaches many people globally through our presence on TV and on online platforms. To God be the glory. Our new lease of life is a testament to God's redemption and grace. Next, we will be airing my most recent sermon. Be blessed as you watch and listen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today, we dive into the word of God to understand the importance of seeking him early in our lives. Have faith in Jesus alone. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. Believing that God's word is true transforms our lives. It's the foundation of our faith and the source of our strength. Knowing who you are in Christ Jesus is crucial. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a child of the Most High God. Putting God first empowers us. It aligns our desires with his will, and it opens doors we never thought possible. The Bible is not just a book, it's our guide, our source of wisdom. Through it, we get to know the Lord intimately. Prayer and meditation on God's word bring us closer to him. They are powerful tools for our spiritual journey. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. Embrace your fullness in him, for you are complete in Christ. Let's pray for deliverance, salvation, and a renewed passion for seeking God early. May his love and grace fill your lives. Innie, you're responsible for our demise. My own daughter betrayed me. She will never know peace. Never. Her wickedness must come to an end. You destroyed our family. You're evil, Innie. Soon you will join me. You must pay for all of your sins. You must pay for everything you've done. Any, any, any. What have I become? The nightmares won't stop. In my dreams, my mother, father, and sister appear, haunting me with accusations. I am now very depressed. I have mental health issues, but I am too proud to seek help. Also, I can't afford to see a therapist or a counselor. I think I will start praying along with Carolina's ministry, and I will try my best to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ even though something stops me from seeking the Lord wholeheartedly. Carolina's story is a testament of the goodness of the Lord. If I follow Carolina closely, meditate on the suggested verses, fast and pray then I think I will also be delivered, in Jesus' name, from all the evil spirits that have been tormenting and manipulating me all these years. I thought I was manipulating others yet malevolent spirits were manipulating me. I am aware that evil plots and plans come from evil spirits, and our fight is not against flesh and blood but against evil principalities and wickedness in spiritual realms. Today, I understand that only Jesus can deliver me, only he can set me free. And only he can turn my situation around for good. Any who once propagated rumors about others, now becomes the subject of discussion. Living in fear of Barclay discovering the truth, Innie reflects on her dark secrets. Innie's fear intensifies as the rumors threaten to expose her manipulation and deceit. Is that Innie over there? 
How the mighty have fallen. Innie was behind it all. She caused the deaths. Pills, manipulation, secrets. The word on the street is that she destroyed her own family. Even her kids don't want anything to do with her. It's true. I used to be her stepmother. She set me up with the gardener. She accused me of doing all sorts of things with the gardener yet I never had an affair with him. She thought she would inherit everything from her father if I was ousted from the house but alas, Kenan didn't leave her a penny. He left everything to his eldest daughter, Irie, and this witch eliminated her. Today, she is reaping what she has sown, serves her right. Witch. If Barkley finds out about the rumors, about the pills, I can't let him know. My children won't even speak to me. What have I done? I don't know God. The malevolent spirits within me won't let me surrender to God. The weight of Annie's actions becomes unbearable as she faces the consequences of her malevolence. Annie grapples with the reality that her past is catching up to her, and her future seems bleak. Annie, caught in a web of fear and regret, faces the harsh reality that redemption seems elusive. How do I escape this darkness? Is there any hope for me? Lord, please help me. I surrender all to you withholding nothing. I repent of all of my sins. Show me the way, O oh God. In the somber aftermath of Annie's life, we witness the tragic consequences of succumbing to the whispers of doubt and negativity. Her journey, marked by worsening mental health, reflects the perilous path of a Christian who neglects the transformative power of a deep relationship with the Lord. It serves as a poignant reminder that our faith is not merely a proclamation, but a daily commitment to immerse ourselves in the Word of God, to pray fervently, and to trust in His promises. In his struggle to embrace the authority bestowed upon believers reveals the vulnerability of a powerless Christian, a state that renders one susceptible to the snares of the adversary. Let any story be a clarion call for us to rise above the noise of doubt and despair, to stand firmly on the foundation of God's truth, and to wield the spiritual weaponry bestowed upon us. A faith devoid of the active engagement with the word and prayer becomes a hollow confession, leaving believers defenseless against the schemes of the enemy. As we reflect on Annie's untimely departure, may it ignite a collective urgency within us to be vigilant stewards of our faith, to nurture a robust relationship with the Almighty, and to manifest His power in our lives. Let us be the embodiment of empowered Christians, radiating the love, grace, and strength that emanate from a genuine walk with Jesus. In doing so, we fortify ourselves against the wiles of the adversary and become beacons of hope and transformation in a world desperately in need of God's light. For in the end, may Annie's legacy not be one of despair but a catalyst for a renewed commitment to living out our Christian calling with unwavering faith, resilience, and a profound impact on the lives of those around us. Concluding Remarks as we reflect on the stories shared in this series, it becomes evident that our choices shape our destinies. Karalana's journey, marked by surrendering to God's will, highlights the transformative power of seeking the Lord early in our lives. The wisdom found in Proverbs 3, 5-6 resonates, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Carolina's suffering could have been alleviated had she surrendered all to God earlier. It emphasizes the crucial lesson that seeking the Lord first in our challenges, rather than relying on our own strength or turning to family alone, leads to lasting solutions. If a science 612 reminds us, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The stories of Innie, Barclay, and Irie illustrate the emptiness of greed and manipulation. Proverbs 11:18 wisely states, The wicked man earns deceptive wages, but he who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. Their pursuit of wealth and power, without acknowledging the Lord, proved futile. Irie's tragic end serves as a stark reminder that our lives are fleeting, and true inheritance goes beyond material possessions. 
Psalm 127, 3 to 5 emphasizes the importance of legacy. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring are rewards from Him. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Isaiah 10 27, And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Parents, the responsibility to leave a lasting legacy rests on our shoulders. Proverbs 13 22 echoes this truth, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. This inheritance encompasses not only material wealth but also a home, security, and the values of righteousness. In conclusion, our journey is a testament to the choices we make, the legacy we leave, and the transformative power of seeking God early. Proverbs 16, 3 encourages us, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and you will establish your plans. May these stories inspire us to anchor our lives in God's word, trusting him with our past, present, and future. As we seek him early, surrendering our struggles, we open ourselves to his transformative grace, ensuring a legacy that lasts for generations to come. Thank you for watching the final episode of Carolana. Watch out for the next movie or series. If you haven't subscribed, we recommend doing so to get notified about new content. Before we conclude, here are some verses from the King James Version of the Holy Bible for you to ponder on. Proverbs 8.17 says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Psalm 63, 1 says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in the dry and thirsty land, where no water is. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith not by sight. Psalm 119, 160 says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Psalm 34, 17 says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Psalm 107, 20 says, he sent his word, and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Psalm 119, 15 says, I will meditate in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy ways. Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And Galatians 3.26 says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Feel free to explore these verses in context to gain a richer understanding of each theme. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts acknowledging your sovereignty and the transformative power of your word. As we conclude this episode and series, we seek your guidance and grace to apply the lessons learned from your scriptures. Lord, teach us to seek you early, recognizing that in our pursuit of you, we find true wisdom and understanding. Your word in Proverbs 8:17 resonates in our hearts, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. May our hearts be inclined towards you, seeking your presence at the dawn of each day. We declare our faith in Jesus alone, recognizing that true faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Strengthen our faith, Lord, that we may walk in confidence, knowing that we trust in a God who is faithful to his promises. Hebrews 11, 1. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. 
we affirm our belief that your word is true from the beginning, and in it, we find the path to righteousness. Psalm 119, 160. Grant us the discernment to recognize your truth in the world filled with deception. Lord, we seek deliverance from every form of bondage and trouble. Your promise in Psalm 34, 17 reassures us that when the righteous cry, you hear and deliver them out of all their troubles. Release your healing and deliverance upon us, O Lord. We understand the importance of prayer and meditation on your word. May our prayers be ceaseless, and our meditation on your precepts be a source of strength and wisdom. Philippians 4, 6-7 Psalm 119, 15 In Christ, we are new creations, children of God by faith. Help us to live out our identity in Christ Jesus, embracing the fullness of the new life you've granted us. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Galatians 3.26 As we close this episode, we surrender every aspect of our lives to you. May the lessons shared today resonate in our hearts, guiding us in the path of righteousness and wisdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.